Welcome back. So I actually recorded quite a lot of footage, and then I got hit by a military escort. It came within 100 meters of the ship and blew it away completely. Uh, like massive, massive damage, and I couldn't recover from that. So I'm just going to go back and do it all again, but really fast this time. So I already know what I want to do. What I want to do is focus on finishing up livability. The ship itself is sealed. I actually have a friend uh, who found this same ship in his game. And fundamentally, the... Um, the ship is pressurizable. He just pressurizes right up, right up, right up right off the top of the bat. But you need to have entrances and exits that don't cost you any oxygen. Uh, so what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be building our primary entrance here in the uh, hangar. Basically, we want to be able to uh, enter and exit this elevator and also the primary ship without ever requiring any oxygen loss, so we're going to be building an invisible airlock right here. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be building it into the side of the freight area, side of the hangar. After we're done with that, we're going to be uh, building the living area, which y you were just looking at. It's up there. That's our living area. But we're actually going to be putting in all sorts of stuff like beds and entertainment systems and stuff. So if you're wondering what I'm doing here, I am making a hole beneath our medical bay because I'm going to be pulling down a uh, uh, air so that we can depressurize the entrance. Ah, so now the question is, how far in do I want to take the airlock? And that answer is pretty simple. Uh, our elevator occupies a specific space. We can put our elevator door here. What we're going to do is we're going to use the industrial doors. Oh, I've already got one. Here we are. And we could do this. We're actually going to do this. So when our elevator door is set up like this, we do have to turn afterwards, but that should be okay. And then what we'll do is we'll put this block back in, we'll make this stuff black so it fits. Now if you don't know how an invisible airlock works, they have to be long and skinny, because what you're going to be doing is you're going to be venting out the air while the player is walking down it. And for that to happen, what we need to do is we need to make it so that the player enters over here and has to walk all the way to the airlock. And that's pretty straightforward. The only question is how we want this entrance to work. <clears throat> I turned off cargo ships because uh, I didn't want to have to face that kind of disaster again. What happened is that the ship actually passed so close to, to my ship that I could shoot at it from, you know, using a handgun if I wanted to, and it blew away this entire engine nacelle and the conning tower and everything in that region. It was a total disaster, uh, and I really thought about, you know, rebuilding it and being like, yeah, this is this, this happens from time to time. But it was just so devastating that I couldn't imagine trying to rebuild it in this mode. I'd have to switch over to creative to rebuild it, because it was just impossible to, to even fathom the idea of syncing up that much stuff. Alright, so that means that our doorway is going to have to be here. And once again, I think that this is the right door to use. We don't have any bump. In my previous version, I actually didn't move it back at all, and the result was that I had quite a bump. I had quite a um, a large thing popping out into the bay, and this one is invisible, uh, which is really, really nice, and I'm really, really liking my retrofit here. Uh, this is much better than the one I, w I did before. Um, but what we need to do is we need to make sure that we can actually find it. we can put something here. Which, of course, we're going to put in an LCD screen. Nope. That one. don't you? 
The only thing I don't like about this is that it's a little bit awkward to hit this button. Um... There, I think that feels a lot better, don't you? Yeah, yeah, let's take a look here. So we've just finished landing our fighter in here. We, we've, we've come in with a load of gold. And uh, we walk over here, we open the door, we walk through, and we can just walk down the hallway. This little bump here is a little bit awkward. I could probably file that off. Uh... That arrow might make it look like I'm supposed to go through this door. That's okay. I think I will live with it as it is. For the moment, at least. Yeah, that'll do. Now all we have to do is rig it up so that it is actually an airlock. Now I can put the detector component, any, the, t the detector anywhere, as long as it's going to detect, detect things accurately. I think the best place for it is right here. So let's go ahead and... Ah, oh, there it is. Fine. Alright, there we go. Oh, we better name those doors so we can find them. Now, using a timer block to do nothing besides close two doors is kind of obnoxious, but it works fine because we're not going to use it as a timer block. When we exit the field of this sensor, we're going to call that timer block with a... It's trigger now. So we're going to skip over the idea of it being a timer at all. Uh, also, on the other side of things, what we're going to do is we are going to, when we enter this block, make sure that the airlock floor entrance closes. So, you can see that this is about the limit. We're going to have to navigate by sound here, so when we back up... That's when it closes. The idea is that we want it to close such that it's just... That's very close to right. I think that's fine. But it's not working on this side. Probably because I set it up to do the wrong thing. Yep, I screwed that up. There we are. That's what it's supposed to do. So let's go over this. We've just landed our ship. We're gonna go into the airlock. This side's already open. That's fine. Go in and... Boink, it closes behind us. See? And now we're sealed in. Now on the other hand, when we go into, say, this door here, we're like, okay, well, I wanna leave. First off, we go off and we do something. So we're over here and the door's closed. We say, okay, I'm gonna leave this ship. We're gonna go ahead and open this door and we're gonna walk out. It's going to seal behind us, and then it might take a second or two for it to decompress, and then we can leave through here. And that should work really easily and well. Alright, so this is our invisible airlock, and it works okay. That's fine. So this is our living space. We're going to stick a whole bunch of people in here, and uh, all of our crew. Uh, I hollowed this place out just so I have an easy access, but we're going to obviously be closing that off. Um, and what sort of space is this going to be? Well, we need to put in all sorts of things like beds. We'll save a little bit of space. Okay. 
Alright, so what do we want to build here? I think that back here, there is an empty hollow, but it's very loud and obnoxious. So the question is, what do we want to put back here? I think that the med bay would do good at shielding some showers. So now we've built a shower location. It's not really uh, hidden from the rest of the ship, and that you know, there's no space you can like sit here and see it. But it is concealed enough that it feels vaguely private. Uh, and in a military situation, I don't really see any serious problem with it set up like this. Um, when the crew is only like four people. What else do we want back here? Probably some lockers. How about some lockers? So we could put the lockers here. And now we have a proper shower room, don't we? So I think that something would do good here. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look. We're looking for something structural. Um, maybe these. Let's go ahead and try these out for size here. Yeah. Bathroom is relatively bathroomy. Of course, the crapper is right here. So let's go ahead and add a sink. That's not too bad. You might be thinking, that looks a little bit odd. Well, don't worry, we'll figure out some way to fix it up. Yeah, yeah, that's better. Now we just need to put a little bit of something here. Yep, that fixed it. All right. So now we can see that we've got this this kind of captain's corner, captain's nook. I actually really like how that looks. That's really nice. And then we've got space for four crew members. And over on this side, we've got a bathroom, or rather, um, a prep area with two showers and some stuff like that. There's only one toilet on the ship, but that's okay. We can cover that up some more if we'd like, but I'd like to think about building some of these more complicated objects. So I was thinking about making this pool table the centerpiece of the room. Uh, pool and ping pong, which is the other table we have available, those are both very strange choices in a uh, space say, spaceship where gravity is going to be uh, iffy still. go. Our official space engineer's pool table. So to get ourselves some exercise, we should put in some gym stuff here. Now obviously, in reality, this is not what space uh, gyms look like. I think they inherited this model from something, and they decided to just use it. Because there are lots and lots of uh, images of the actual space station gym set. They have a treadmill, and they have a weights machine, and both of them use uh, resistance-based gravity rather than just assuming that there will be gravity. Of course, they have a reason to assume there won't be gravity, because they don't have any artificial gravity. It's 
pretty funny that these don't take any computer components. You done with the bathroom yet, Jed? I gotta go. I guess we should probably make this more feasible. Sigh. Well, shall we see what happens when we try and get in this now? Let's save it just in case something awful happens. Sometimes these things go really haywire if you're not lucky. Well, now I can see the sensor's range. Good. That worked exactly like I wanted it to. I'm not going to bother to put a door here. That's, that's plenty good. So this is the living area. So the last thing to do is to seal ourselves up in here like it's a tomb. Good, that's the right direction. So we just we've just landed our ship. We see the airlock. This is the entrance to the airlock. And we go, okay, let's go in. Door closes behind us automatically. No problems there. We can open this guy. Jump ourselves up. Oh no, the door is closed. Ooh, that's awkward. Look at that. Hey, it's my headless corpse. Ah, uh, scary. That's better. I'm sleeping next to myself. Man, I'm just gonna cuddle with me. Hmm. How you doing, me? Alright, well this ship is now fully functional in terms of having pressurized spaces that work and having airlocks that work and having no annoying problems. But we have retrofitted the pieces we need we needed desperately to retrofit. After this, it's going to be an effort to try and make things um, work well, uh, feel good to walk through, feel good to use. The usability. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. But for now, let's go ahead and start to pressurize the whole ship. By the way, there are still um, three big spaces I need to renovate. This is one of them. One of the spaces is is invisible, uh, and the third space is this floor here. This entire floor needs to be renovated. Let's go ahead and expose it to space and waste some air, shall we? Ah, that's fine. That is correct. Good. All right. So that fixed up our ugly um, conning tower a little bit. We still have some ugliness left over here on the sides. All right, so let's go into the conning tower entrance here. I don't believe we've actually set this one up. No. This one is all manual. It's certainly charging up fine now. Uh, let's see what our oxygen tanks look like. 48.8, good. I don't need it to be real low, but if it's going to be low... That's good. It lets us depressurize and test our depressurization systems. So, what have we accomplished? We have made this ship habitable. So this is our living space. It looks out over the bay here, and it's easily accessible from the bay. So when you walk in, after, after having parked your ship, it's only a very short elevator ride up to your living quarters. Over here are the actual living quarters. We've got ourselves a pool table and some other entertainments. You gotta keep fit, I guess. 
There are some bunk beds for the four random serfs that might be helping me out on this voyage. And then a nice little captain's quarters for people who are uh, of higher rank to sleep with themselves. Hmm. I'm beside myself with envy. There's a bathroom here with a sink and, of course, a toilet. The toilet's blinds automatically open, and when you go and sit on it, they automatically close. And when you get off, you appear outside. Over here is a medical bay, which is fully charged with uh, oxygen, and you can pass through here into a prep room where you can take a shower. and prepare for your day with your locker. Although there's only four people aboard, five people maybe, there are eight lockers, because I, li I really like giving people their space, you know? Space. The final frontier. Once you're done with your night time or resting or whatever, you can go back up to your command module. The conning tower has been retrofitted, so that it is now many stories tall, and if you sit in the command chair, a full view of all of these screens. Right now we can see that it's burning through the last of our ore. There are some emergency exits which you should never ever take. Of course, we are running out of, out of helmet on, so taking those emergency exits would be super dangerous for us. And there's a little on-duty cabin in the back here with a bed and some video games and a place to sit down. This is one of the invisible airlocks. This one goes straight up here, of course. The other invisible airlock leads out to the flight deck. Better put on my helmet. There we are. You can see this is how the, uh, uh, how the invisible airlocks work. They just pump the air out automatically. And then you're out on the flight deck. And so the retrofitted ship works just fine, but unfortunately it's too tough, and if you try and crash it into an asteroid, it will barely get scratched. This ship, the Volander, is a very, very nice, heavy refinery vessel, heavy exploration vessel. It's got lots of guns, lots of space, it's just good all around. Uh, it was built before oxygen was created, so retrofitting it to house oxygen was a lot of fun. The people who originally designed it designed it pretty well with the oxygen in mind. I don't know whether they did that on purpose or an accident, but the ship is sealed, so it's not a big deal to try and make it oxygen uh, friendly. All you have to do is make sure you've got some airlocks, which we do. Uh, the biggest problem I have with the Volander's long-term use is that the Volander has this cargo bay, which is designed with these upwards attachments. Um, this is a bad thing to do in modern ship design because there are very few ships that use that kind of port. Uh, the prevalence of exploding uh, landing gear in multiplayer means that if you have ships that are planning to dock up with you, every one of these docks should have two kinds of setups. These should be on the forward wall, or the back wall, whichever one you'd prefer, uh, so that when you are accelerating forward or backwards, you aren't pushing your ships away, because um, they're not going to have landing gear, or they won't be relying on landing gear. On whatever wall is opposite that, you should have merge blocks. And it's that simple. Um, so your landing bays should never have this on the long, a on the short axis like this. They should always be on the long axis. As it is, none of my ships are actually capable of docking in here. Uh, I could easily build, uh, modify them or build them anew or change the way that this is built. But I figured that was probably enough work for now. Now it's time for us to go home. Good night. We can make it. Ah. 
We survived more or less intact. That was really anticlimactic. <laughs> You're too tough. You're too well-built. Whatever. 